Let me tell you the truth. Many etiquette tips for the English afternoon tea on YouTube are not true or correct. You might have been given the wrong information. Hello, welcome to another episode of Etiquette with Ziki. I live in London. I am an etiquette and PR consultant at the London Kensington School of Etiquette and Manners. Nowadays, you see a lot of videos about the English afternoon tea on YouTube, sharing etiquette's do's and don'ts. But many of them are not correct or not complete, and even some tea experts make mistakes as well. You might have been misled. I hope my experience will help you to know more about this quintessential British dining. If you like my sharing, please consider subscribing and share. Afternoon tea. This tradition is so cherished by people of all nations. The concept of taking a break in the afternoon and indulging in delicate treats and fragrant tea is something culturally common. There are various kinds of afternoon teas in the world. I remember once I was with my fellow teacher in Shanghai, in one of the most fashionable districts. We were so surprised to see there were more than twenty types of afternoon tea served in this area. And some are even served with fried chickens and spare ribs. And in other countries, people also enjoy some delicacy in the afternoon with a cup of tea in their own style. But when it comes to the English afternoon tea, it is another story. It holds a very special place in the hearts of many. It is a quintessential British experience, conjures images of elegance, refinement, sophistication, and timeless tradition. The elegance of English afternoon tea goes beyond just the food and drink. It is also defined by a set of unspoken rules and etiquette. In this video, we will explore some common mistakes people usually make when taking the English afternoon tea. By understanding these blunders, you can ensure your afternoon tea experience is both enjoyable and respectful of the traditions. Mistake number one: use the knife to cut food. This is the most common mistake of all. You can forget all about etiquette, do's and don'ts of afternoon tea, but one thing you must remember is you never ever use the knife on the table to cut anything, the scones, the sandwiches, and the cakes. I mean anything. The knife on the afternoon tea table is for spreading the jam and the cream only. You use your hands to twist and open a scone. And you use your fingers to eat the finger sandwich. You just pinch, just like that, and take small, elegant bites. And you can use a fork to cut the cakes. Once I was so shocked to see an etiquette coach on YouTube who has almost one million subscribers. Teaching people how to use a fork and a knife to cut the finger sandwich elegantly and eat. My reaction was, "Oh my goodness! Finger sandwich is not a club sandwich or a lunch sandwich. They are big. For finger sandwiches, that means you use your fingers to eat, and never ever use a knife to cut anything. I mean anything in the afternoon tea." Mistake number two: the teacup grip. The other common mistake in afternoon tea is holding the teacup incorrectly. 
in most tea houses, I mean those good tea houses or luxurious hotels, they serve tea in very fine bone china teacups. They are light, exquisite. The teacup should be held by three fingers, pinched like this. You use your thumb, index finger, and middle finger to hold the teacup. Sometimes the tea could be a little bit heavy. You can use your five fingers to hold the teacup. But uh, most of the time, we will use our index finger to hook and hold teacups like this. Of course, this is not a crime, but we would suggest you use your three fingers to pinch, just like that. Remember, teacup is not a mug. Proper teacup handling adds an element of elegance and sophistication to the experience. However, if you are watching an American video about tea etiquette, they might teach you to hold the teacup with the pinky sticking out. But for the English afternoon tea, it is a no-no, no pinky. Mystic number three, the clank and the lick. You probably have known how to stir your tea, but the sound of a teaspoon clinking against the fine china is disturbing and annoying. To do this correctly, you just need to stir your tea very gently, lightly, in a back and forth position. We are always very tempted to lick the teaspoon, but this is a no-no. What you need to do is, after stirring, just shake it a little bit and put it back on the saucer, and that's it. Mistake number four, eating a scone like a hamburger. When it comes to scones, as I said before, you never use a knife to cut or slice anything you just gently twist to open the scone and spread the clotted cream and jam with a knife. But after spreading, you do not put the other half back and make it like a hamburger. There are many restaurants and tea houses serve scones like a hamburger, especially in those cafes serve a lot of tourists from the overseas. About five years ago, my colleague and I were taking afternoon tea at a very famous restaurant in Kensington. They serve afternoon tea in very exquisite china ware. And the china ware was a royal commemorative collection. Very expensive. And there were lots of overseas tourists in the restaurant. But we were so shocked to see the scones have been sliced and spreaded with jam and cream and served like a hamburger. Later, we talked to the manager and explained to him. We were glad that he accepted our opinion and since then, they served the scones properly. Mistake number five, mistaken afternoon tea for high tea. Traditionally, the English afternoon tea is served on low tables, just like this one. So, a classic English afternoon tea is low tea. Back in the days, low tea was an upper-class affair, an opportunity to enjoy luxury and show off their wealth, because tea in those days was extremely expensive. As for the working class, tea was not a luxury they could enjoy every day. Occasionally, they drank tea with a meal at dinner time. As you can imagine, tea was enjoyed at a higher dining table. This is the origin of high tea. It is for the working class. Obviously, the word high has lost in translation. It is usually associated with elegance, wealth, upper class, and high society. 
If your friend invites you to a high tea, most of the time they mean afternoon tea. But still, in some hotels, they still serve high tea. It is afternoon tea served on a dining table with a meal. You need to find out. I can continue to talk about tea etiquette, afternoon tea etiquette for another three hours. There is so much to know and so much to learn. Afternoon tea falls into the category of fine dining. If you want to know more about the etiquette of afternoon tea, social etiquette, and fine dining etiquette, you can subscribe our online recorded lessons. I have included course links down below in the introduction. You can have a look at the content and subscribe. I have also included a 20% discount coupon as well. And please remember, afternoon tea is meant to be enjoyed slowly and leisurely, so no rush. Or you miss the essence of this cherished affair and tradition. Take your time, enjoy each bite, and at the same time, learn, practice, and refine your table manners. After all, English afternoon tea is more than just food and drink. It is about elegance, grace, and the simple pleasure of life. All right, and now you have known the five most common mistakes people usually make when taking afternoon tea. You can learn more about tea etiquette by watching our videos and clips. And thank you for joining me this time. I shall see you in the next video in December. I will talk about lots of etiquette tips for Christmas. But until then, take care, stay calm and poised, and enjoy your cuppa. See ya.